Welcome back. So last week, if you missed the video, we were in the Philippines and we were there so I could learn everything I can about adobo. Now, a few of the key takeaways from me from that trip was that adobo is super varied. There is so many different recipes and they can be really quite different. None of them wrong, yep. all of them good, but everyone's mother's version the best. So I'm gonna take everything I learned there and I'm gonna share with you a couple of recipes here today back in the studio. If you missed that video, click that link here. I highly suggest you go and watch that before uh, you finish watching this video. If not, then stick around and let's get stuck in. So we're gonna make two different types of adobo today. We're gonna to start with what we're gonna call the pre-colonial adobo. We're gonna show a couple of different ways of serving it. One very traditional way and one very, very modern way. The reason I'm not gonna do the, the adobo that everyone knows and loves with soy sauce and vinegar is because I've already done a video on that and the link for that's down below. And I'm actually pretty happy with that recipe. I think I got it pretty spot on. So if you wanna try something different, then stick around because we're gonna try some really unusual adobos I don't think many people people would have known of. So this adobo that Joel taught us, the pre-colonial adobo, it's very, very simple. And it reminds me a lot of the French technique called confit, which is basically cooking you know, a piece of, of, of protein in its own fat. So the ingredients that we're gonna have is pork. We're gonna use pork belly, and you're looking for some pork belly that has a lot of striards, like a lot of different layers of fat and, and meat, and that's gonna give you the most flavor for one. So really simply, all we're gonna do is we're gonna dice this pork belly. So we're gonna keep it into pretty large size chunks, you know, like this size, and we're leaving the skin on. So the way that we cook this is that we effectively layer it into, into a pot. Um, you wanna use like a heavy base pot with all the, all the aromats, and then we'll pour in our vinegar and some water, and we're gonna cook it over a low heat. So the other ingredients, garlic, super important. We'll use about 10 cloves here and we'll just crush them. You don't really need to kind of cut them up too small because they're gonna cook out for so long. Bay leaves, kind of pretty unusual for Southeast Asian food to use bay leaf, but a key ingredient in, in any adobo. Black peppercorns, um, and quite a lot, it's a two tablespoons. Salt, now this is super important. You wanna use high quality salt. So this is like mold and sea salt. It's important to use high quality salt when you're doing a dish like this, because it's so simple. So lard, this is just lard that I've got from the supermarket, and it's a decent amount. And then one of the most important is the vinegar. So coconut vinegar, if you can find it, but if you can't find this, the best alternative is probably just a plain white vinegar. But let's get this laid up in the pot and get this cooking happening. Okay, to cook this, you're gonna want a Dutch oven or like a heavy base pot that you got a lid for. The heavy base helps with distributing the heat evenly. And then effectively, all we're gonna do is put the, the lard in, and we're gonna make sure that, that it's pretty well spread out on the bottom, and after that, all we're gonna do is just to layer it. So we're gonna put in a layer of pork, then we'll put some of the aromats in, some garlic, some bay leaf, layer, layer, layer. Now I know this seems like a lot of salt, but pork can take a lot of salt. And this is kind of how they preserve their meat before refrigeration. So it doesn't actually end up being that salty. Don't, don't panic too much. So there we go, layer of, of the pork belly, aromats, salt, and we will repeat. To that, we're gonna add about half a cup or 180-ish mils of water and about a cup and a half of the coconut vinegar. And then we start to cook. All right, so we're gonna place that onto a medium-high heat with the lid off. Now, the reason we keep the lid off for the first bit of cooking, say 20, 25 minutes, that's to burn off some of the strong vinegar acidity. It's gonna smell, it's gonna stink the house out, it's gonna smell really strong vinegar. Once that smell starts to dissipate, we can put the lid on it, we'll turn it down low, and we're gonna cook that for about three hours. And while we're waiting for that vinegar to burn off, now is a great time to remind you that the cookbook is now on pre-sale. The pre-sale is 20% off, so make sure you jump down in the description, click that link, and order your copy now. So this has been uh, simmering like this for about 25 minutes now, and the, the smell is almost gone. You can still smell like vinegar, but at least you can smell it without kind of coughing and, and spluttering. So I'm gonna turn this right down to pretty low. So on this induction, I'm putting that onto number two. I'm gonna put a lid on it. And we'll leave that there for, we'll come back and check it at two and a half hours, two hours, 40 minutes, because it's gonna take three hours in total. All right, to serve with our adobo, we're gonna do some pickled green papaya and carrot together and then some pickled bamboo shoots, which was a really interesting use. Now, you can't get fresh bamboo shoots here in Australia, or not that I've ever found, so these are just canned ones. You can get these, these here. So pretty simple. Cut that, oh, these things always freak me out. <laughs> They're so funny. 
I don't know why I find that amusing, but I do. Peel it, scoop these little seeds out that I find so funny. And we'll just peel this carrot and then we're gonna slice those into matchsticks. So really simply slice it one way and then I just run the knife through it at this point. Then the same with our carrot. So we're gonna take that into a bowl, season it well with salt. Then we're just gonna massage that salt into it and we'll get some of that moisture out of that carrot and that papaya. So we won't bother doing that with the bamboo shoots. If you are dealing with raw bamboo shoots, you probably would, but because um, they're canned, we won't bother. And we'll make our pickling liquor. So super simple. We're gonna start with some plain old sugar, say two tablespoons. We're gonna pinch of salt, but not too much because it's obviously gonna be pretty well seasoned. And then equal quantities of coconut vinegar and boiling water. Just gonna stir that until the sugar and salt dissolve. It's probably a little bit small, but we're gonna put our bamboo shoots in here. We'll pack them nice and tight. And then we're just gonna pour over our pickling liquid. And this is still hot, that's okay. Close that up, let it cool down. Ooh, bit of overflow there. And that'll last for a long time in the fridge. For the carrots and papaya, we're gonna wash it first. Just under cold water, get all that salty water off and into a sieve to drain. And just gonna give it a good squeeze out from there into another mason jar, pack it in tight. And these simple pickles are super handy to have in your fridge, just like the last time. Pour our pickling liquid over the top until it completely covers. We'll leave that in the fridge until we're ready. All right, the cooked adobo. Now, for those of you who are paying attention, that's the cooking adobo. <laughs> this, is, this is what I made yesterday, uh, and for good reason. So you cook it for three hours, and then you turn the element off, crack the lid a little bit, and let it cool down, and put it in the fridge, because it actually gets better the longer you keep it. So traditionally, this is how they would store it, and every time they needed some, they'd pull a bit out, they'd fry it off, and then they'd eat it with everything else. So it's like the ultimate meal prep. Now I know it's in a lot of fat, but most of it has been rendered out, and you're gonna get left with a whole bunch of lard like this, and you can use that for cooking. Animal fats are incredible for cooking. So let's fry some off and see how it tastes. So we've got a cast iron pan here on a pretty high heat. So this, if it came out of the fridge, this would have been a solid block. All I've done uh, is just put it into, uh, onto the stove just like really low, just to kind of loosen it up, but it's still technically cold. So you're trying to develop a bit of char here, well not char, I guess a bit of like a mallard reaction, get those kind of caramelization colors going. You don't want to move this around too much because it'll break up. You're trying to develop that nice crusty outside part. So just be careful, it does tend to spit quite a bit. It's the moisture still coming out of the pork, but this is what we're looking for. Onto some steamed rice, some pickles on the side, the, um, you know, the acidity cuts through all that fattiness. And there it is. Probably one of the original forms of adobo, which is very different to how most people think of adobo, but is absolutely delicious. It's so good, it's rich. That crunchy bits that you get on the outside from the pan frying, go along with the pickles and the rice to soak up all that flavor. It's simple, but it's absolutely delicious. So when we first were introduced to Joel, he had a jar, like this a big one, that was full of adobo. And it had all the, the, uh, the larder and everything. And I saw that and immediately said, uh, da confit, the classic French technique of cooking a protein in its own fat. He responded with, yeah, well, at Christmas time, we make rillette out of it and serve it on croutons. And I thought, that's a genius idea. So let's make some now. So all I'm gonna do is take a bit of this pickle because you're gonna want some texture in here. So you want about a one to 10 ratio of pickle to the pork. Get it roughly in a line, and then we're just gonna kind of run our knife through it so you kind of get a bit of pickle in with the meat. Place that into a bowl. Take some of our adobo. So you can take meat and you're just gonna squeeze it and break it up. Don't be afraid to get a little bit of that, uh, the, the lard in there too, because that's what's gonna use to bind it. So rie is a charcuterie from France, and they confit it, and then they kind of shred it like this, and you fold it back around on itself, and they usually cap it, or they put it in a jar like this, and they'll cap it with some, some more lard or some more animal fat, um, and it's a way of preserving the, the meat. So now we're just gonna work that into each other, and that won't need any seasoning. There's enough gar salt in there, enough garlic, and as this chills down, it will 
it will kind of solidify a bit and it will be perfect for what we do next. So I'm just gonna shove this in the fridge for sort of 15 minutes and then we'll put them on some croutons and you've got your, your next favorite um, party snack. I would like to finish that with some fresh ground black pepper. And there you have it, my adobo riette croutons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's incredibly good. I think that cracked pepper at the end really helps. Just amplify the flavor. The soft riette with the crunchy crouton, absolutely delicious. Now, as you would have seen in last week's video, we ate at a restaurant called Cantina da Tita A, which is in Cavite, which is just about an hour's drive from Manila. And I have to say that was probably my most memorable and favorite restaurant or meal experience I've had in a long time. I, I, I really enjoyed it. So their adobo there was called adobo seca. The main difference is that is that they use a spice called anato. And anato is a very mild flavored spice that adds a really nice red color to the dish. And they just really amplified the garlic flavor uh, and a little bit more vinegar flavor as well. So they started with a, a, a pork belly that had been cooked in water and vinegar. We're gonna do it a little bit different and we're gonna start with the pork belly that we've already cooked in its own lard and we'll add those other flavors to it. So if we've already made this dish, it's a great way to extend that and make another dish from it. So we have a metric ton of garlic, maybe not metric ton, but probably 20 cloves, uh, just minced up, chopped up nice and fine. And then the annatto seed. I've got some hot water here that we're just gonna pour over. And what that's gonna do is just really let those, uh, that color release. You don't want the actual seed in there. We're just gonna uh, infuse that water with it. So we're just gonna add some pork lard from the pork that we cooked earlier. And we're gonna add our garlic. Now we shouldn't need to add any salt to this because there should be enough salt in the pork already. And you kind of want to do it on a medium low heat. You don't want this to brown. You just kind of sweat it out a little bit. Now we're going to add our pork. Add a little splash of the coconut vinegar. And then with our natto, you want to, you don't want the seeds in there. You just want the, the juice that comes off. So like before, when we're cooking the, the, uh, the base base of this, um, you kind of want to cook it for just long enough to the vinegar to really burn that harsh acidness off. Once that's gone and your pork's cooked through, it's pretty much good to go. Well, let's get some rice. All right. Next is some rice. I'm pretty pumped for this. You know, it's subtle, but it's definitely different to the first one. It's a little bit stronger in acid, which I, I enjoy. I really like the, the garlic that comes through and the anato adds like a nice little undertone as well. So adobo, as Joel said, none of them are wrong. All of them are good, but everyone's grandmas are the best. And I couldn't agree more. There's so many variations of this dish and they're all absolutely delicious. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have enjoyed bringing this to you. Join us next time on Origins, where we go and find the best bar me in Ho Chi Minh City. But next week, we're back to a normal recipe video. So we'll see you then. Peace.